no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for your support on Patreon. We appreciate you. The RD-170 has been described in many of our lessons. It is an RP-1 fueled engine with four combustion chambers, and one turbo pump powered by an oxygen-rich preburner. We explained last lesson that oxygen preburners burn cleaner than fuel-rich ones. This matters a lot for RP-1 rocket engines, but less for hydrogen or methane ones. The problem with oxygen preburners is that hot oxygen is a problem for any metal. If we build a titanium preburner chamber, we can design it to withstand tremendous pressure. If we fill it and surround it with argon gas, we could heat it up to about 1,668 Celsius before it would melt. But if we did the same in an oxygen gas environment, it would start to burn at only 610 Celsius. If we used the superalloy Inconel instead, our chamber could survive between 900 and 1,300 Celsius. It was the development of superalloys that let the Soviets make the powerful clean-burning turbopump that powered the RD-170. The Soviets were hoping to beat the Americans to the moon. But the powerful RD-170 came too late for the Soviet moon route. The Soviets had not taken the American challenge seriously, and were four years behind Saturn V's development when they started on the N-1. The N-1 used a large number of the smaller NK-15 RP-1 engines, each producing about 1,500 kilonewtons. The RD-170 produced 7,900 kilonewtons, meaning the N-1 would have only needed six of them to fly. But Korolev died, the N-1 crashed, and the Soviet moon mission was canceled. The RD-170, cut from four chambers to two, is what we call an RD-180, and is still flying on several American rockets today. Our vision is the future. The future where we look after our precious planet in a much better way. We want to be instrumental in allowing large constellations of satellites that record data which we will use to simply better manage what we are doing with our home planet. We want to revolutionize and disrupt the space transportation service market. We want to do it ultra low cost such that everyone can go to space in the future. If you think about internet from space, climate change and smart farming, all of these applications are done with data from space. The engine is key and the environment requires you to basically marry together high performance and low cost. We go the way to not um, qualify specific equipments for space anymore, but rather look at components and equipments available in automotive and energy and oil industry and just use it for the launcher. And we are putting the parts to the extreme of what they can provide. We are the first mini launcher company to use staged combustion. It's an engine technology that is simply put superior in performance and efficiency. We couple this with a very low cost industrial automotive manufacturing network. We have gathered the best team in the world. It's really a bunch of space enthusiasts and experts which you could never find anywhere else in the world. It doesn't feel like a company, right? Everyone is standing up in the morning and thinking, huh, wow, I can pursue my hobby another day. It's just fantastic. I would like to make things change with an easy mindset, despite a lot of experience. We create a large cloud of solutions and we focus on the most important items. We don't over-define and over-specify all the individual system boundaries. Sparse matrix engineering and agile development methods are the reason why we can do things faster and more cost-efficiently. RFA is developing a three-stage rocket designed to launch small satellites up to 1,350 kilograms to polar orbit. The RFA-1 will have an RP-1 fueled first and second stage, with an undetermined optional third stage. The engines will be 3D printed 
and the first stage will be recovered and reused if all works well. RFA was the first European company to successfully develop and test a staged combustion engine. This engine is called Helix, and nine will be on the first stage, with one on the second stage. This engine has survived several hot stage tests. Hi everyone! We are at the beginning of something big. In July this year, commercial launch providers Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin flew people into space, and in just a few days, SpaceX will conduct the first all-civilian flight to space with its Inspiration4 mission. At the same time, commercial payloads are launching with an unprecedented frequency and reliability. A new industry is emerging around the world and it's the source of innovative and disruptive new business. Data from space will allow us to better manage this planet. I think it's fair to say that space is humanity's next great adventure and Rocket Factory is paving this way. Leaving Earth is incredibly difficult. Everything has to work 100%. You don't get a second chance. Even after 60 years, going into orbit is one of humanity's most difficult endeavors and represents the leading edge of all of our technologies. The most difficult part of a rocket is the engine. And I want to talk about the engine we developed at Rocket Factory in detail. The special aspect of our engine is that it operates using the staged combustion cycle which is the most efficient rocket engine cycle in operation today. One of the most challenging aspects of designing rocket engines is the power pack, which pumps propellants into the chamber with very high pressure. The turbo pump on our engine has a shaft power of about 1000 kilowatts, pumping 30 kilograms of propellant every second at pressures exceeding 300 atmospheres. The power for the turbo pump is generated in the gas generator. But the gas generator's task is to generate gases at fairly low temperatures of about 500 degrees Celsius to prevent the turbo pump from melting. The exhaust gases are therefore full of unburned propellants and in open cycle engines these gases are simply dumped overboard the motor. Bad for the efficiency of the engine, bad for the overall efficiency of the launch vehicle and bad for the environment. In a closed cycle staged combustion engine, these unburned exhaust gases are fed back into the combustion chamber, where they combust fully in the cleanest fashion possible. The efficiency of the engine is measured by how much propellant it uses compared to how much thrust it generates. It's about 7% higher as compared to outdated open cycle engines. This 7% increase relates to about a 30% increase in payload capability. We are the first in the European Union to successfully develop and qualify this technology. The latest launch vehicle developments by the most advanced players in the industry, such as Blue Origin and SpaceX, all use staged combustion engines. Dear viewers, in mid-July 2021, we demonstrated our staged combustion technology by successfully performing an 8 second duration firing test. In that 8 second duration firing test, we demonstrated startup and shutdown sequences which are extremely difficult for this type of engine and we achieved a thermal steady state across all components. With the engine running long enough to obtain a thermal steady state, we have retired most of the development risks. As longer duration firing tests, lasting for a few minutes, just need more propellant and are therefore more expensive to conduct. It's this engine with its high efficiency that ultimately can make all the difference. Higher payloads, lower fuel consumption and better for the environment. It's a game changer and sets a new standard in the small launch vehicle domain. We claim technology leadership for a new generation of ultra-efficient rocket engines developed in Europe. But believe me, we are not resting on our achievements. We put every minute of our lives into advancing this technology further. Every single part we manufacture from here on in will be more performant, more efficient 
and more cost effective. In these first firing tests, we already achieved a combustion efficiency of 94%. Our task now is to increase that efficiency further by a few percentage points and manufacture the first flight engines. The engine is the most difficult element of any launch vehicle development program and the overall development progress is best judged by the state of the engine. However, on the launch vehicle side, we're also progressing at fast pace. Towards the end of the year, we will have a qualified engine, a qualified first and second stage, and a prototype payload fairing. Put these parts together and you've got yourself a rocket. We are taking some big steps towards our first launch. You can probably hear just how excited I am. We've been exceptionally efficient in our development program and have spent little funds to get to this point. Thanks to our dedicated team and our investors that bring much more to the table than just funding. Things here will get more exciting every day and we will share the big successes with you. We cannot wait to see RFA1 take off. And that day is coming. Thank you for being with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and a warm welcome also from my side. Stefan has just elaborated on our superior technology. I would now like to take a step further and consider its strategic importance for the commercialization of European space transportation. Rocket Factory Augsburg is very proud to be the technology leader in Europe with its stage combustion engine. Young engineers from 30 different countries work here on our rocket, which will provide simplified and inexpensive access to space at an unrivaled low price. As such, space will be enabled as a platform for future technologies and the competitiveness of key industries. We are helping to ensure that numerous satellites will continue to connect humanity, enable research and help understand and protect our planet. Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, everybody who wants to do something in space will decide for our concept. Because our launch vehicle combines three decisive competitive advantages. A precise, simple and flexible delivery to the desired orbital position. Extremely competitive pricing enabled by superior technology like the stage combustion engine. The last point in particular is crucial. With the stage combustion technology, our propulsion system is more powerful, efficient and cleaner. It's a game changer. The engine efficiency allows us to deliver 30% more payload to orbit, even more in some specific cases. We are the first company in Europe to have developed the stage combustion technology, a milestone in European spaceflight. It is only available in nine different countries of the world, in very few developed by commercial companies. And it didn't go unnoticed. Rüdiger Albert, head of the Ariane 5 and the future preparation program at ESA, congratulated us with these words. Congratulations, you are now a member of the very exquisite club of stage combustion cycle propulsion. This is an honor which spurs us on. Ladies and gentlemen, our announcement that we are building the world's lowest cost small rocket has caused quite a stir in the international space community. Ultimately, the state-funded European space industry will also benefit from this pricing competition. But what is the significance of our technology in European context? And why is the commercialization of European space transportation of strategic relevance? Let's take a closer look. In April this year, the EU adopted its space program. In addition to the economic benefits of data and services, the program focuses primarily on two things the EU security and autonomy in space and its important role as a leading player in the space economy. The EU sees the benefits of space data for everybody, both for the public sector, for example, by preventing natural disasters, optimizing land use and decreasing the security of transport and energy structures, and for the private sector. Data from space will open up entirely new business opportunities and these will require a cost-effective, reliable transport to orbit. And we want exactly to support that. European taxpayers should not pay for the development of launch systems while commercial companies are stepping in. Europe should evolve and act as a customer procuring the transportation service. The released budgets shall then be allocated in the application domains mentioned before in order to better understand our planet, connecting people and exploring the universe. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the strategic importance of a commercial European launch system is immense. The European space economy has enormous potential with a huge ecosystem of new space startups arising. The foundations for exploring this potential must be implemented now, with a shift from government-driven developments to induced commercial competition. In consequence, we will tremendously increase the speed of innovation cycles and disruptions. This is the path we need to take in order to catch up with the dominating space nations around the world. The challenges of the modern world are best met with fast decisions and innovation cycles. We strongly believe that any problem in the world can be solved with technology and on the basis of a sophisticated data model of our planet. We have to wake up and get started. The commercialization of European space transportation is just the beginning. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for listening and stay safe at Astroproterra.